Joseph, one of the six remaining unbeatens in college football, and Blake Barnett here on homecoming, hoping to keep the Bulls unblemished in 2018. As we welcome you to Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa, Florida, and college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. It's 21st ranked South Florida, taking on a UConn squad, trying to turn the season around in the America East standings in the American Temple knocked off Cincinnati from the ranks of the undefeated earlier today in overtime. UCF about to take on East Carolina on the road. And USF trying to get to 7-0 for the second time in school history. Hey, folks, how are you? Jason Horowitz, happy to be alongside two-time Super Bowl champ David Deal. Happy to have you with us here in Tampa. David, undefeated is undefeated no matter how you slice it in October. But it doesn't mean it doesn't come without stress. Three fourth-quarter comebacks for the Bulls. You watch some of their games, and it looks like two different teams in each half. And this is a game that this Bulls team needs to come out swinging and let it all go in the beginning because there's no reason not to. We've seen what type of team they're capable of when they put things together in the second half. Now it's time to do it at home. Last week against Tulsa, though, that's not what they did because they were down 24-10 in the fourth quarter. Blake Barnett had a couple of fourth quarter touchdown runs, but the extra point on the first one was blocked. They needed a two, they didn't get it. So with a minute three to go, they got the ball back. They needed a field goal, hit Tyree McCants, and then Kobe Weiss from 22 yards out hits the game winner. But the big story, again, Jordan Cronkright, four straight 100 yard games. As an offensive lineman, this is the guy that you love to block for because if you give him a seam or a crease and get him to the second level, he creates those explosive plays. And for this Bulls offense, everything in the running game opens up the things for the outside and what they want to do with these wide receivers. All right, as for UConn, certainly been a disappointing season so far. One in five defense. We're getting good throughout the broadcast. Uh, historically bad pace, but they had a very rough bye week. Linebacker Eli Thomas suffered a stroke last Wednesday before a workout. He was rushed to the hospital. He was there until yesterday when he was released, and now he's back at home in Elmira, New York. David, how does a issue like that affect a team that is so young like UConn? For the players, it's very difficult because they're meeting, losing their leader. I mean, he is the vocal guy. He is the energy guy, and he needs to bring that. And most than anything, Coach Edsel, their head coach, said, play each play like your last and make sure that when Ian is watching this game and what Eli does, make sure you make him proud. And Eli Thomas back in Elmira. Randy Edsel in his second state with UConn. Meanwhile, Charlie Strong. Year number two here at South Florida, 16 and two. They started last year 7 and 0, and trying to equal that mark this year. USF won the toss. They deferred to the second half, and for the Bulls, black uniforms. The players didn't know about it until they went back in for warmups. They were hanging in their locker rooms. No South Florida team player has ever worn black until tonight here on homecoming. Short kickoff coming up to the 12 and the Huskies. Good return out past the 30 and UConn will take over on its own 32 yard line. It's time now for the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And everything starts with the quarterback, senior David Pindell, six foot 195 in his second year. Columbia, Maryland began his career at Lackawanna Community College. Second among the American Athletic Conference quarterbacks in rushing. He leads this team, one of the 13 in the FBS, in both passing yards and rushing yards. David, he's been hurt the last couple of weeks. He played on a gimpy knee, but now they say he's healthy after the bye. And what you love about him and being that dual threat, he forces a defense to play 11 on 11 football and guard and make sure they protect him with his legs to the pertainment. He throws on first down, and it's knocked away. Coverage by Makai LaPointe as we take a look at the Connecticut starting offense. Kevin Mensa is their starting running back. He's a good one. Experience on the offensive line. But Keon Dixon getting the start. 33 grabs last year, but just five this year. You know that this defense for the Bulls are going to try to rally and stop the run and make this team one-dimensional. He's got to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. On second and ten. This time the handoff to Mensa picks his way for a couple of yards, call it three, and it'll bring up third and seven. How about this USF defense? They were gashed last week by Tulsa against the run. They don't have their middle linebacker, Nico Sautel. He's out with an injury, so they move Greg Reeves from defensive end into the linebacker spot. He is their most experienced player on the defensive side of the ball. He can get people lined up and be the quarterback of that defense. That's why they trust him to put him in that position, and he's got to play well tonight. Third down for UConn on the season, 39%. An empty set for Pindell against a blitzing USF squad. They like to come after the quarterback. 
designed quarterback run. Needs to get to the 42, and he's not going to get there. Nick Roberts coming up from the safety spot to force fourth down. Great start for this Bulls defense because that's one of the things that they struggled with last week against Tulsa. Those third and long situation, giving up big runs and letting them to extend the chains. Great job swarming, getting to the football, making sure that they're punting it and getting their offense a chance to start fast. I mean, UConn the last couple of games against Cincinnati and against Memphis had opening drive touchdown, so that a disappointing three and out. Luke Magliozzi. One of the better punters in the conference, a high, deep punt. Tyree McCants lets it bounce over his head, and UConn is down there to cover it at the four-yard line. A 58-yard punt for Magliozzi. So USF will come out and try and start fast as we take a look at the USF Chick-fil-A starting lineups and their quarterback. Graduate transfer Blake Barnett started his career at Alabama. Couple of seasons there, had one start before moving on to Arizona State. Didn't start last year behind Manny Wilkins and here at USF. And now his seventh career start here in the Bulls. And he comes up firing on first down and he's got a completion for nine yards out to Stanley Clairvaux, the fifth year senior out of Miami, Florida. What's impressed you the most out of Blake Barnett? I think just his ability to lead this offense and get things going early. And they go fast. It's Cronkite. He's got the burst and the big play out near midfield. Finally brought down by Tyler Coyle. But a pick of a 35 for Cronkite. And this is exactly what he brings to this football team. You give him a crease in the seam, he has that home run hitting ability to take it to the house. And again, they go fast. And again, it's Cronkite. Nothing up the middle. Caleb Thomas, one of the freshman defensive ends for UConn, making the stop. We've talked about starting fast. Well, this offense is really pushing the tempo. They're going no huddle. They're not trying to let this all defense substitute. They want to make sure that they're the ones dictating it and being aggressive going forward instead of how they waited till the second half for a lot of these games. Three of their last four wins, they've scored a combined 23 first half points. Barnett keeps it himself. Gash up the middle. Gets across the 40 and a first down for Barnett. Omar Fort, sophomore safety. Might have saved the touchdown. Great job once again by showing misdirection, smoke and mirrors. You have the motion, you have the swing over. What does that make a defense do? Hesitate. And when Blake Barnett sees that, he sees the opening and takes the run. This time he hands it off to Cronkite, and he picks his way for a couple of yards. Eddie Hahn, redshirt sophomore linebacker, along with Kavon Jones is there. Let's take a look at the rest of the Bulls offense. Mitchell Wilcox, their tight end. One of the bigger mismatches on this team. This is a NFL prospect tight end. He overpowers defensive backs and safeties. He outruns linebackers. He is the matchup that they love to get the football to, especially in key situations. Second team all-conference a couple years ago. Barnett taking a shot on second down towards the end zone. And he let his receiver out of bounds. That was Clairvaux down at the four. Here's the UConn defense. And Tonight, they got a couple of guys back from injury. Taj Herring-Wilson at corner, Marche Terry as well. But Kavon Jones, one of the freshmen on this defense, they need to play well. The linebacker group is the group that needs to play the best in this game in order to get the amount of significance that they need to get those pressure into the backfield. And it starts right there with Kavon Jones playing right in the middle. He has got to make impact plays for this defense. He's off on this third down and six for USF. Barnett feels the pressure, takes up off the middle. And a flag down right there in the middle of the line of scrimmage, right in the area of holding. Adam Savoy is our official tonight. So a person personal foul, shot block, offense, number 78 and 74. 15-yard penalty, replay third down. They got the center, Brad Cecil, and right guard, William Atterbury, with that. That means that one's holding up. The other one that comes and chops through, uh, that, that is not legal. But when you're running that inside zone scheme and when you're not getting your hands off of that guy, you can't hit an unblockable, undefensible defensive tackle. Brad Cecil making his first career start, true freshman out of Jacksonville. And interesting that Randy Edsel decided to take the penalty instead of fourth down. So push him back to third and 21. He's worried that USF would go for it. Barnett dumps it off. Wilcox threw his hands and inter 
intercepted. That's Santana Sterling. Linebacker wearing the number for Eli Thomas, pointing to his jersey, knowing his teammate is watching back at home, and Sterling with his first interception. What an unbelievable interception for Sterling and for this defense to give them life early in this football game. And just like you said, he's out there wearing Eli Thomas's jersey. What a way to start for him. Just the fifth takeaway of the season for this UConn defense, but maybe a spark on the road for the underdog. UConn hasn't had many takeaways this season in a one in five campaign, but a big one here in the first quarter. And maybe more so, if anything, emotional with Santana Sterling getting in the interception, wearing number 22 for Eli Thomas, their teammate who suffered a stroke 10 days ago before a workout. He was in the hospital until yesterday. And David, you talked about him being the emotional leader of this team. He came from junior college last year along with Santana Sterling. But they know his story overcoming three ACL injuries and coming back every time. And Santana Sterling went to Coach Edsel this week and said, Coach, I want to wear his number this week. Those two in the linebacker rooms together have that special bond. And what a way to honor him by getting that first interception of his career tonight. No name across the back of his jersey either to honor his teammate. So it's back to offense for UConn, and Pindell with the fake, and a first down run that picks up 11. He's into USF territory and a first down. You know, when you have a slant and angle defense like they play on the bull side, you have to make sure that you maintain, maintain gap discipline. You see that they get that push by, give them an open lane, and make sure that they get them to the second level. That's something that this Bulls defense has struggled with. When you have that movement, you can't bypass your gap. They're 114th in the nation in rushing yards allowed. Very different from last year's team who had a couple of NFL players on the defensive front. Empty backfield, Pindell again. This time he's spied and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. USF's Josh Black getting in there. Josh Black got the start tonight when Greg Reeves moved to the little middle linebacker, but there you see the stunt on the right side. You see the tackle and the tackle first, the end looping around, the end is untouched, and comes up with a big tackle right on the quarterback draw. And the other part to this, too, for UConn, David, is they are trying to eat up as much clock as possible. They know they've got issues on defense, giving up explosive plays. They want to grind this out as much as possible. On second down, the handoff. Mensa, a huge hole inside the 20. And Kevin Mensa finally pushed out of bounds by Mikhail LaPointe. Down to the 14 yard line, a 32 yard pickup. Left tackle Ryan Vandemark gets a nice push there in the zone scheme, gets that defensive end wide and gives a clear crease for the inside. And once again, the Bulls defense has not stopped the bleeding and stopped the run game. Into the red zone for UConn. And again, they've had first quarter success. Talking to Randy Edsel this week, it's when they get down in games that they struggle, but they have moved the football early in games. Pindell to the air on first down. It's Herji Mayala streaking across and a shoestring tackle down at the 10 yard line. As the Huskies are into the red zone, brought to you by Verizon. Just the 20th trip this year for David Pindell and his teammates. Scored 68% of the time with touchdowns. Now they've been down in games large, so they haven't really been settling for field goals. But this is a game they gotta score touchdowns. No question, this is a game that they can't settle for field goals, not only for the game, but for the confidence of this offense. Pindell the handoff, Hall opens up. mensa has got a first down, and a touchdown! Kevin Mensa breaks it through the middle for 10 yards. And the Huskies, the underdog on the road, up early. That is the one thing that we knew about this UConn offense. It's not that they didn't start fast. It's just about finishing and staying within games. So what a great start for this UConn offense. Being able to build off of the takeaway in the defense, drive down, running the football, and imposing their will on this Bulls defense. They had a battle for kicking this week. It's Clayton Harris, the freshman, trying the extra point. And he knocks that through. So, nearly middle point of the first quarter. It's UConn on the road off the bye week. Thanks to the interception of Blake Barnett. And Kevin Menza caps it off with a 10 yard score.
Football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Verizon, the unlimited plan you need on the network you deserve. And by Chick-fil-A Nuggets. Tonight is Nugget Night. Those are the drawings of the new USF Football Center that they plan to break ground on next year and hope to have it completed by 2020, a $40 million facility here in Tampa, Florida. They'll worry about that next year. They're undefeated right now, but they're trailing a UConn team and Kevin Mentz off of a 10-yard run. 7-0 here in the first quarter. Off the interception from Blake Barnett, right down the field for this UConn offense. Uh, what, a, what a great way to start for the UConn football team. They said that they needed to come into this game, build confidence early, and what a way to start. Getting an interception on the defensive side of the ball and driving right down with a scoring drive. Noah Iden drives it back to the three-yard line. Coming out Antoine and just across the 20-yard line. Let's go back to USF, take a look at the CDWI vision for the Bulls offense. This is one of the things that you love about this offense and how they run it. It forces a defensive end to make a split-second decision. Look at that time he takes it inside with the running back to Cronkite. Barnett takes it and keeps it. Here we go once again, that split-second hesitation. Defensive end is upfield too much, keeps his eyes on the quarterback, hand it off inside, and a huge run touchdown for Cronkite. And with this offense, with what they're reading, are you see him getting better week by week? No question. They're definitely getting better because they're not only running the same play out of it, but they're adding more wrinkles and twists to it. And Cronkripe breaks out of a tackle, picks up 11. His helmet came off. He'll have to go to the sideline. Let's take a look at your keys to the ball game. Well, the one that we started with, the USF offense, get on them early. That is something that they did not do. And for the UConn defense, they cannot give an explosive play up to this football team consistently because that's not going to keep them in this game. Well, they just gave up another gash for nine yards. That's Johnny Ford, true freshman out of Miami, 5'5", 168 pounds. They love his speed and his ability to wiggle in the hole. And he gets it again on second down trying to push his way and he's driven back by Travis Jones 57 for UConn all 350 pounds of that freshman oh that is a big freshman up front but when you're in there and you're playing that leverage you need to make sure that you get your pads lower and keep those offensive linemen off of your linebackers that was enough for a first down though so he did get the push Randall St. Felix in motion Barnett on first down out of the pocket looking for Wilcox down the field intercepted again it's Omar Fort step for step with the tight end his first interception of the year and the second takeaway for UConn in the opening quarter well we talked about USF having to start fast offensively but that is definitely not the case with back-to-back -back drives with interceptions Blake Barnett just five picks on the year, but two here in the first eight minutes of game number seven. Mar Ford with the second interception of Blake Barnett here in the first quarter, and this for a UConn defense that is last in the nation in so many categories, David, and not just for this year, but they're trying to improve so that they don't finish last in what has been couple of decades in some statistical categories but a couple of takeaways maybe the bye really did help Randy Edsel squad you know and that was the one thing that when we talked to Randy Edsel and this coaching staff they said you know it allowed them to breathe it allowed them to go through their weaknesses their strength and really start to tailor these game plans towards this young roster on both sides of the ball so that they can continue to develop and make the progress that they need to but not simplifying it so much that it's not easy for a defense to pick up and Bill Crocker the defensive coordinator who just about a month ago, questions asked to Randy Edsel about whether or not he would make a change in the middle of the season. He was defending his defensive coordinator and got a couple of takeaways in the first quarter. Pindell on the run, breaks another one. David Pindell takes it out to the 41-yard line. He picks up 18 in the first down. One thing that you want to make sure is that you edge the defense if you're getting it out to the perimeter. And Eric McClellan, the tight end, is, actually does a double duty. Comes in, seals inside, and then is able to kick back to the outside, too. So 
That's exactly what you're looking for in the running game. It takes all 11 in a, in a time to get it done, especially when you're getting to the perimeter. Pindell, 31 yards rushing on four carries. Already 78 yards on the ground for UConn. Pindell this time to the air. Open McLean. He's got the grab down to the 35. Beautiful touch from the senior quarterback. Look at what happens when you're able to run the football. Get a little bit of play action in, and that is exactly what this offense needs to get going. If they can run the football and get this over-aggressive defense to step up, that's what's going to open up passes down the seams and across the middle just like that. And one. that was behind Greg Reeves, who again is getting the start at linebacker for the injured Nico Sautel. Got hurt last week in the Tulsa game. So quickly into USF territory. And the run again for Mensa to 30. UConn's off to this great start, which is as much of a key as anything for a one and five ball club. It really is. It's obviously, we know that they're what they're trying to do defensively is make this team one dimensional. But if you do that and you can win one on ones outside, that's what's going to stretch the field for this offense. And for the USF defense, once again, what we said, make them one dimensional. Right now, they have not done it because they're still running the football very successfully against them. Tyreek Beals into the ballgame for UConn. He's the receiver at the bottom of your screen. They run away to the other side. Reeves chasing down Mensa, and he'll escort him out of bounds at the 30 with a flag down at the 31. That's another thing UConn cannot have happen penalties. Holding. Offense number one. 10 yard penalty. We play second down. That's on the receiver, Herji Mayala. The senior out of Montreal. Last year, their leader had 651 yards receiving. Much more of a possession guy this season. He most certainly has. You know, that's where Kyron Dixon has to play well in this game because when Herjie Malaya gets those man-on-mans at the outside, that's not playing to his strength. He is a more zone player, not a possession player. So when he can get inside those schemes, and if they do play zone, which they don't play a lot on USF, that's what's going to give him more opportunities. Now, you'd say UConn has a hard time playing from behind the chains, but they've been getting 10, 15, 20-yard plays so far here all night. Pindell takes up off the middle, and again, he's got a big hole. Had some more space, cut it to the outside. Maybe the wrong decision. Vincent Davis, the true freshman at nickel, came up to make the stop. You can see that they're looking to the passing game, but no, he's running it right away. A QB draw, you see the fullback take it inside. But that's the thing that this defense needs to make sure that they continue to contain him inside the pocket and make sure that when those defensive tackles press inside that they don't get too far upfield and give up an A-gap run. Third down off the interception of Blake Barnett, his second of the opening quarter. They need the 25. They run it. That's Xavier Scott, and he falls forward maybe for two. So now a decision here for Randy Edsel, because as he told us this week on our call on Thursday, he has confidence from his kickers from 50 yards, but both of them have been dealing with injuries. And, and that is definitely something that you're worried about, but look at what they're going into right now. They know that this is a game that they cannot afford to play timid or scared, and they're going for it. Look, you're one in five, a season which you're trying to completely turn around. You're on the road against an undefeated ranked team. So fourth and eight here in the first quarter. Pindell's got plenty of time. Open receiver, and he missed him. Keon Dixon streaking across the field. Mike Hampton was trailing in coverage, and UConn turns it over on downs. Nice job by the offensive line up front. They're running stunts by the defensive line. It's picked up. Ball was just overthrown. So Charlie Strong's team avoids the bullet on the Blake Barnett interception. And they're back on offense, down a touchdown here in the opening quarter. Jason Horowitz, David Deal, happy to have you back with us on a hot, sticky night here in Tampa, Florida, where the underdog on the road has a number 7-0 seven, seven lead thanks to a couple of interceptions of Blake Barnett. Well, the first one wasn't his fault. You know that that one's tipped right there. It should have been caught. So there you give that one to him. But this one is clearly his fault. You're breaking contain. You're throwing it down the run. You've got to get that ball to the perimeter, to the outside. To Will Wilcox is the only one that could catch that. Two of his first three passes tonight were intercepted. Now, they have had success running the football. 72 yards on seven carries. So you wonder maybe if that's the game plan, because they've hit UConn for big plays. 
They go to the ground, and it's Omar Fort bursting in. He had the last pick, and he gets the tackle for a loss. Nice job by the safety, filling in in the run support and coming up with a big tackle for a loss. You see him squeaking through there, right there on the backside. Great clear tackling in the open field there. That's the start that this defense needed on this drive to continue to build that confidence throughout this football game. That's their first tackle behind the line of scrimmage tonight. Second and 14, Barnett to the air. His sure-handed senior receiver, Tyree McCants, takes it out to the 35. So a pickup of six, which will bring up third and eight for this USF offense. Tyler Coyle was on the defense, but great job by McCants getting separation and getting to the sidelines. McCants, eight for 91 last week, including the 32-yarder that set up USF for the game-winning field goal to beat Tulsa 25-24 at the buzzer. Inside of three minutes here in the opening quarter, they trail a touchdown. Blitz comes. Barnett can't escape. Down he goes, Darian Beavers. His third sack of the season leading the Huskies. I love what Coach Crocker's doing on the defensive side of the ball. He is not playing timid or scared. You see the safety blitz early on. You see a blitz add-on right now by the linebackers. They're coming after this Bulls offense saying, you know what? We've seen the way that you've played in your previous games. We're going to dictate the tempo of this football game early and continue to thrive. Flag before the punt from Trent Schneider. False start. Offense, not all 11 players were set for a second prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, USF came out tonight in the black jerseys for the first time in school history. And since then, really nothing has gone well here in the first quarter. I, I hope it's not the black jerseys. I wore for the Giants red jerseys five times in my career. 0-5. Never worked out for us. Fair catch from Kyle Buss. And so UConn, it's fourth possession from its own 27. Tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern, saddle up and watch the PRCA's finest compete in Texas at the All-American Finals presented by Pendleton Whiskey. Only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, not the Cowboys here at Raymond James Stadium, home of the Buccaneers. You and I took a little tour earlier, tried to get on the pirate ship. <laughs> it's amazing they said no. I was, I was shocked about well, that. Well, when you asked to fire the cannon, of course they're oh, going to yeah. tell you no. Why take away my fun? <laughs> UConn up 7 nothing. A couple of minutes to go here in this opening quarter. Bindell keeps it, dumps it off, and it's knocked away. That play had disaster all over it. Ronnie Hoggins Jr. Coming up, he is there, do everything in the I secondary. Mean, you talk about a Swiss Army knife with his versatility. He is all over the field. He is the vocal leader on defense. And once again, what is he? He is also the playmaker. 15 interceptions in his high school career. He's listed on the depth chart at corner, at safety, and at nickel corner. You absolutely love that out of a player, the versatility, but more than anything, the toughness to be able to do all those things. On second and ten, back to the ground. Pindell kept it. And not getting much on the outside. Maybe two. Vincent Jackson, the fifth-year senior, coming up to make the stop. You have to give the Bulls defense much, much credit for how they're playing in this drive. Giving up very, very little ground inside, making sure that they're clogging up those gaps and forcing everything to the outside to where the flow of the defense is coming from. Now UConn tonight took one of the Blake Barnett interceptions, turned it into a touchdown on a drive that didn't face a third down. The last one, they went for it on fourth. This they've got to have to continue the drive. Pindell, it's batted up in the air and almost intercepted. Josh Black checked that Jawan Brown got his hands up in the air and almost had a pick six. Well, that would have been an exclamation point if he would have been able to catch that because that's going to the house. What a great way for this Bulls defense to bounce back, create negative plays, and now hopefully this offense can feed off of their energy. That's the thing, too. The first half, it's amazing that USF is 6-0 and with all the tough spots the offense has put them in in the first halves this year. Magliozzi, again, a good punt. McCants breaks a tackle, and he's going backwards. 
still on his feet and now taken down at the 19-yard line. UConn chasing him down. It's T.J. Gardner, another one of those redshirt freshmen making the stop back at the 19. You know, we talked about this UConn team being young, but I will tell you this. They're flying around the field today. They're playing with energy. They're playing with toughness, and they're just letting it all loose. Well, and that's the other thing with this UConn defense. What did Billy Crocker say to us? One of the reasons for this one in five start with the defensive numbers, our guys are making timid mistakes. I don't care if you make miss a tackle. Just make the decision. Be aggressive and go play. Stop thinking and just let your natural reaction take place. If something happens, it happens, but don't be timid. Again, quick pass. There's one of those near miss tackles. Clairvo, Stanley Clairvo, got out of the initial hit, couldn't keep his feet. Did pick up four on first down. Well, now you wonder, too, about the confidence here for Blake Barnett. Three of six, couple of interceptions. And a handoff. Barnett keeps it. Breaks out of tackles himself. And the six foot five quarterback out to the 40. He picks up 15 on the first down. Well, that's definitely a way to build confidence back in yourself is by running the football and running through contact, which he's doing right here. You see coming up again, Omar Fort was the one coming in to make the tackle, but he tackles the running back who does not have the football. And, and you're 100% correct about Barnett, about building that confidence, because if you think about in the first half of games this season, six touchdowns, seven interceptions. Go to the fourth quarter, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. So you know that he is not a fast starter. But having said that, you know how important it is to protect the football and not give away turnovers, especially when you're in the position that you're in right now. Omar Fort, the injured UConn Husky. And he's back to his feet, walking back towards the UConn sideline. This is a game which UConn got a couple of members of the secondary back from injury. Marche Terry's missed the last couple of games with an ankle injury. Taj Herring Wilson at the corner spot. And Omar Ford certainly had a big impact tonight with an interception and a tackle for a loss. He definitely has. And right now they're working and they're checking him out. He was injured, banged up a little bit, but they definitely need all hands on deck because they do not have the depth on that side of the ball. Out to the outside. And not much there for USF. Four on the jet sweep which is going to bring us to the end of the opening quarter. UConn with a couple of takeaways on defense. And the Huskies up 7-0 here on the road. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Unbeaten USF. On homecoming, as we take a look at the Go RVing road trip backs here in Tampa for USF celebrating the week. They call it Super Bowl week. 22nd homecoming game tonight. All time 12 and 9. And a good crowd on hand here at what they call Ray J, Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa, home of the Buccaneers. They had the bull walk earlier. Team has been. Sluggish, though. It's been more of a walk than a run for the Bulls here opening quarter trying to get to 7-0. and But you can tell by the video footage of just looking at the fans, they're not going crazy right now because they've been through this before and they've seen their team come out on the, the good side of it. But having said that, offensively, they need to get things clicking. Second and four to start the second quarter. That's McCants breaking out of a tackle. He had the first down and now he steps out of bounds. So McCants in his effort trying to break the tackles lost a couple of yards. And so USF will face third down. Getting the ball to the outside to McCants, trying to work with it, getting him the little swing pass out there. Once again, though, these are the things that continue to come up for this young UConn defense. The missed tackles, those are things that are going to hurt them as this game continues to make progress and they continue to throw that football outside and get it to their running backs. USF on third down, 0 for 2 in the opening quarter. Barnett keeps it himself and UConn read it the whole way. O'Neal Robinson, the true freshman safety. They love this kid once he adds some weight, and he forces fourth down. Just great job, alignment, assignment, discipline. Because if there's a team that should know how this scheme is run, it should be this UConn defense because they face it up against their own quarterback. So great job by the UConn defense, maintaining 
doing their job and getting the offense back out onto the field. So Trent Schneider set to punt it away for the second time tonight. Kyle Buss, senior former Robert Morris, wide receiver, transferred to UConn back for the punt. And he calls for another fair catch, which goes into the end zone. So a 54-yard punt, but it'll come back out to the 20-yard line. And, you know, we talked coming into this game about Jordan Cronkright, the star running back for USF, Blake Barnett. Could he be matched by David Pindell? And so far here in this game, UConn's defense has allowed its quarterback to run the offense. Both of them are running the football, and that's where they're getting their success. It's not in the passing game. It's running the football, and that's something that what we talked about earlier. Is that what's going to build confidence for Blake Barnett? And for David Pindell, we know that this is what he does. We know that since he leads him in rushing and in passing, that he is going to be a stronger runner because that's what this offense needs and this offensive line needs. With the 39 tonight, he's gone over 500 rushing yards on the season. Multiple 100-yard rushing games for their quarterback, and he's taken off again on first down. Drilled as he gets just across the 20. USF's defense with a little extra as well. And this is a Bulls defense. They're one of the best in the country in tackles for loss. They play towards the line of scrimmage. Nick Roberts, one of their young players who they love. UConn going faster. Mensa, patient through the hole. He gets it up to the 24. And again, it'll bring up third and about six for this Huskies offense. And that's something when we talked to John Dunn, the offensive coordinator for the Huskies, he said, we have to stay consistent and patient with the running game because that's what's going to help our offensive line ease into things. And we've seen other teams like Tulsa last week have success on that, especially in the second half. So Mensa comes off the field for this third down. Xavier Scott, the redshirt freshman running back, is with Pindell in the backfield on third and six. Pressure off the edge. Pindell trying to get to the corner, running. Cannot get to the 30-yard line. He's shoved out of bounds at the 27. Josh Black, Greg Reeves, both over there to force fourth down. You know, and this is what the offense of the UConn team has struggled with. You see on the outside, Vandermark goes to reach. And when you reach, there's no way to punch and redirect Kirk Livingstone. So when you get to these positions, especially for this offense, they need to make sure that they're in third and shorts, third and threes, third and fours, because if they let these defensive ends pin their ear back, it is going to be a long night. Already two punts tonight for Luke Magliozzi of more than 50 yards. This one's shorter, and McCants lets it bounce, and the bounce takes it down to the 20. So with the bounce, it goes 51 for the Australian punter. The undefeated team at home trailing by a touchdown here early in the second quarter. It's the one and five team on the road up and touchdown against 21st ranked USF. Jason Orwitz, David Deal with you here in Tampa as we take a look at the Bud Light inside tracks. David, it's a UConn defense. 49 or more allowed in six straight games. That's the first time that's happened in 23 years. But tonight, at least early, it's been a completely different story for Randy Itzel. Especially when you're able to get two takeaways on that side of the ball. And not only was that the scourge, but coming into this one, they were also giving up 658 yards per game. So think about the way that this team has started on the defensive side of the ball. It's exactly what they needed. Now let's see if they can finish it. Barnett to the air on first down. has got McCants for five. And to put that 658 in perspective, the next team in the FBS in terms of defense gives up 545 a game. That is That's a more than 100 yards. Difference. And so you look at this UConn team off the bye, and you wonder, are they that different, or is it USF's offense just struggling again? Barnett through the middle, almost intercepted. Instead, it's caught in the cans through traffic. He carries defenders out to the 38 in the first down. Now, you want to test and see what your arm's capable of doing. That's the way to do it. He throws a dart in between three players and gets it to his go-to guy, McCants. That's what he's capable of. But now it's doing it consistently, play in and play out for an entire game. Four catches tonight for Tyree McCants. That one, Barnett off the deflection. 
and just gets back to the line of scrimmage brought down by Travis Jones and an injured Yukon Husky back behind the play. So that's Eddie Hahn who made the deflection and then was taken out as he was coming back down. Redshirt sophomore linebacker from Monmouth, New Jersey. And he's walking back towards the Yukon sideline. Blake Barnett is lucky that he was in the area because that could have been his second tipped interception for the night. And you know, that is the one thing that you see on this UConn defense. They know how fast and how quickly he's trying to get the ball out of his hands. If you can't get home, get those hands up in the throwing lane. It's Barnett back. Meanwhile for UConn, Omar Fort back in. He left earlier after being shaken up. He's back in in his safety spot, and he's got an interception tonight. This is second and ten. Blitz comes. Barnett throws where the blitz came from, and it's rule the catch. Out to the 46. D'Angelo Antoine with the grab. Once again, they're bringing that blitz. They're sending it to the inside. Gets it out quickly, and it, I'm trying to see if that's a catch. Jernard Phillips went to the ground. He had his freshman Randall St. Felix open, and it went over his shoulder. Now there is a flag back behind the play. 10 yard penalty, first down. That was called on Marcus Norman, who is starting his 28th straight game tonight. And when you sit here and we're talking and continue to watch this UCF offense, we've got to take into account that Brad Cecil is starting as a true freshman at center for the first time tonight. Demetrius Harris is their left guard, who is a redshirt freshman. And Donovan Jennings is starting at left tackle, which tonight is his third straight start. So you look at the center to the left side of this offensive line, there is not a lot of experience up front. And we asked their offensive coordinator, Sterling Gilbert, is he concerned about it? He said they're good football players. They'll hold up. Barnett clutches, dumps it off, and a good tackle. Omar Fort on the running back, Jordan Cronkright. Just his fifth catch of the year out of the backfield. And another flag. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty. First down. And that is on the center, Brad Cecil, who you were just talking about. You know, sometimes when you're running these RPOs and when you're running the read option and he's slinging it out of there, you have a tendency to get upfield, just like we saw him that was called a penalty. And this promising drive that USF had to the 35 of UConn. All of a sudden, it's first and 25 back at midfield. Cronkright on the handoff, and he's wrestled to the turf. Travis Jones, that freshman defensive tackle in the middle. And again, that's all part of the youth of this Connecticut defense. Seven freshmen in a given time have started in the same game, including five true freshmen. Obviously, that's not a situation that you want to be in on the defensive side of the ball. But when you are forced to play these guys, what is the only thing that's going to make them better? Game experience. And that's what they're getting right now and throughout the season. And it's only going to bode well for them future in their career. And this is the spot they've got to get off the field. Up a touchdown. And USF with a second and 23. Barnett, his seventh straight completion. But McCants can't get out of the tackle. Robert King the third, another redshirt freshman with the tackle. You know, the one thing that you always say, especially in sports, body language doesn't whisper, it screams. Just look at the USF offense after plays. They're not playing with confidence. They don't have that energy. And right now, like we've said in this entire first half, the UConn Huskies are taking the tool. It's third and 19, seven minutes to go in the opening half. Wilcox and Solomon, their mismatches to the bottom of the offense. UConn brings four. Barnett settles in the pocket, dumps it off short. And now you're facing fourth down after the penalties. Nowhere near field goal range for their kicker, Kobe Weiss. And they got to bring the punt team on. Unbelievable. You think about having your own setbacks and that how it hurts this football team. 
prime example in this drive. We were looking at a first at the 25, and then it was all the way back to where they are currently. Uh, it doesn't matter how much talent you have on a football team. You can only overcome so many self-inflicted wounds in a drive. And they are one of the most penalized teams in the nation. Bus calls for the fair catch. And so UConn will take over deep into the second quarter, still with the lead on the road over one of the six remaining undefeateds in college football. Jason Horowitz, David Deal, happy to welcome you back to Tampa where one of the six remaining undefeated teams in college football trailing here at the midway point of the second quarter, 7-0 UConn. It's a team in USF that, like UCF tonight, trying to get to 7-0. The Knights tied with East Carolina. They're in the second quarter as well. Clemson blew out NC State in a matchup of undefeateds, and then Alabama earlier today on CBS. Uh, they, again, nobody at this point has yeah. been a match for Alabama. The victory cigars have been out quite often uh, for this Alabama football team. The team that I'm looking for and looking to watch down the stretch is this Notre Dame football team. Don't get me wrong, I've watched their games this season, and I think that they're a great team. But we've seen in the past down the stretch where that one loss that comes up and creeps up, that knocks them out of that. BCS championship at playoffs. Mensa on first down and a big pickup out towards the first down marker. Ten yards for Kevin Mensa. Notre Dame off this week. And then next week on CBS will take on Navy in San Diego. The thing that they said and they love about Kevin Mensa is get him north and south. Get him downhill to let him build up his speed because when he does, he is a powerful runner. And that's something that they need to do and they need to get him more involved in this football game as this drive in this football game continues because the way that they're being successful is running the football. Quarterback design run and Pindell picks up five yards. Nick Roberts, the safety, comes up to get him out of bounds. But again, they are the first down yardage on the drives that UConn has been successful. That's what's really gotten them going. And here's an opportunity, right? You get the ball deep in your own Terry. Can you take clock and take the lead into the half? Talk about a huge momentum builder for this team if they can do that. But more than anything, they don't need to worry about that. They need to just take one play at a time, focus on that individually, because we've seen how negative plays hurt them throughout the entire season. Mensa the burst and a first down run out to the 31-yard line. He's up to 70 yards. This offensive line, you see the power, you see the pull. What do they do? They continue to move people out of their gaps and get clear running lanes. And again, Mensa cuts it upfield. Picks up six on the first down run. Roberts again comes up to make the tackle. Are you surprised with what you've seen so far here tonight? Yeah, you know what? Not necessarily. I think I'm more surprised about how I've seen the USF offense. But for this UConn football team on the offensive side of the ball, it hasn't been like this season that they've not been able to move the football downfield. It's just that with their defense, games have gotten so far out of hand that they're playing from behind and they're trying to play seven on seven and one on one pass pro with their offensive line. Xavier Scott in for Mensa on second down. Maybe one. Kevin Bronson, Tyrone Barber in there to make the tackle. Their defensive tackles. And so now here comes up third and short for a UConn offense that so far tonight is not converted on third down. But when it's third and three, that's the great thing about having this mobile quarterback. You have still two options to either run or throw the football and still keep this defense off keel because the fact that the dual threat is your best player, put it in his hands. They need the 41 for the first down. Delay to Scott, and he's not going to get there. Wrestled down from behind. Xavier Scott chased down by Tyrone Barber, and it'll bring a fourth down. You know, that's something, uh, a play call that I, I don't agree with, the delay draw like that. You know that that's something that this USF defense struggled with up against Tulsa, so you know that they've been focused about that. But not to mention, you've been the one that's been running downhill and being aggressive. Don't play passive now since it's third and three. Go after them. You have nothing to lose at this point. And give USF some time on offense as well. UConn has not led at the half in a game this season against an FBS opponent. And Randy Edsel's going to take his first time out. Let the Their clock first. wind all the way down seconds. to one second before taking it. 
So you said you're not surprised with how the game has gone for UConn's offense. To the other side of this, you said surprised with USF's offense. And again, it's because of the defense. But this has been the problem for the Bulls all season. Yeah, it sure has. But when you sit there and you come out offensively and your first two drives are interceptions, you're not putting your defense in a great position to start with. But like we were talking about, the fact that offensively they did not start fast and defensively they're still getting eaten up by the run. That's the problem with this football team. You can't wait until the second half of games, especially when you're going to be facing the opponents that they're going to face down the road. Magliozzi on for his fourth punt. He's averaged over 50 on the first three. And another boomer. And a fair catch called at the 20. 43 yards on the punt, and that'll send us to a break. The Bulls offense trying to get on track before halftime here at home. Surprising lead here at number 21, USF. Be sure to stay with us for the Verizon Halftime Report. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Kevin Card will get you caught up on all the action in college football. Plus first half highlights and stats from right here in Tampa. How Michigan went to Michigan State and won. Clemson dominant effort against NC State as well. All that coming up at the half. Uh, we've been talking about this young team for UConn. Those numbers are staggering. But David, it's the one at the bottom. Ten different true freshman starters on defense. Nobody else in the country coming into the weekend more than three. We're talking about 17, 18 year old kids playing right now up against an undefeated football team on the road. But the thing that we were talking about down the stretch and in their future of their careers, this is only going to make them better football players and it's only going to make you count better. Mitchell Wilcox, his first catch of the night on first down. And it's enough for a first down. It's a 13 yard pickup for Blake Barnett who started three of seven in this ball game. And he has now hit nine straight passes. Back to the ground, Cronkright breaks it through the middle. And he's got a first down run out to the 48. And just like we were talking about, they've got the big hit ability. Going quick in no huddle right now. They're pacing the tempo fast and they want to attack UConn. Back to Cronkright, has the edge. Cuts it over the middle and he's inside the 40. Tripped up by O'Neal Robinson, but not before he picks up a first down. Plenty of time on the clock. All three timeouts in a game they have trailed since the first quarter. Darian Beavers has got to maintain outside leverage. He gets washed down inside by Marcus Norman, the right tackle. That gives a clear running lane to the outside. 79 yards for Cronkite and a timeout taken by UConn. Timeout. UConn. Their second. Trying to regather this defense, Blake Barnett trying to get his team even before halftime here in Tampa. USF on the move late in the second quarter for offensive coordinator Sterling Gilbert in his second year here at USF. Was with Charlie Strong for a season at Texas after a good season in 2015 at Tulsa. Talking to him yesterday, he said getting Blake Barnett campus in May might have been true but he didn't get to work with his quarterback till July no they had to build that resume through July to the point of this where they're at to the season and it wasn't only him Jordan Cronkite was sat out all last year was banged up during training camp so they truly didn't know exactly what they had until they started playing these games Wilcox the grab out of the timeout Omar Fort wrestles him to the ground all three timeouts for the Bulls inside of two minutes here in the second quarter Barnett had two interceptions on his first three passes. Nothing big, but he's been accurate since then. Back to the air, taking what the defense gives. Solomon has the first down to the 24, but Eddie Hahn wraps up the tackle. Once again, they're bringing that safety blitz with Omar Fort, but he's got to hold it a little bit longer. He showed and gave a pre-snap look to them that they already knew that he was coming. Get the ball to the outside to Solomon, and he was able to make an inside move. If he's able to break that tackle, that's going to be a touchdown with the safety blitzing. On first down, Barnett hits a 12th straight pass, a bullet to Mitchell Wilcox, his third grab. Down to the 15-yard line with 115 and counting. Going up against Santana Sterling. He's able to body him up and come up with a big catch to convert. Oh, I'm sorry, not convert. They're short. So to 
on uh, first down. There's second and two now. But what a big time throw once again by Blake Burnett. We're seeing the confidence now out of him. And that's the biggest thing that you need to see. How is a professional, more than anything, how is a quarterback going to be able to bounce back when adversity hits him? And all that time off the clock. But again, they got the timeouts. Now they got the hit. And a touchdown. Johnny Ford, the freshman running back, his third touchdown of the year. And they're an extra point away from tying it up. This is the type of drive that this USF offense is capable of having. Let it go on the inside. You see the movement on the, the push and the double teams. Great block by William Atterbury to finish it and get that pancake block. Touchdown drive, and they shouldn't have waited for this. This is what they can do. Well, they, they said they get punched in the face, and something happens. Now, they got punched in the face a couple of times here in the opening half as Kobe Weiss with a cast on his right hand for a broken finger, drills it through, and it's seven apiece with 43 seconds to go before halftime. Third career touchdown for the five foot five freshman. Yard drive for USF that began at the three minute mark of the second quarter, so two minutes and 17 seconds to get in the end zone for the first time, and really give this crowd something to cheer about as Stone boots it away and out of the end zone. And UConn stops back at the 19-yard line. And so David with 38 seconds to go here before halftime. One timeout, a game that you have led the entire first half. Would you be aggressive or would you take a knee? You know what? I think that where the Rats sitting at this point on the field and only one timeout, I think that they may try to take a shot to the sidelines just to see if they can continue to move forward. But at the same time, you're going into half at 7-7, seven to seven, and you are playing well on that side of the ball. You don't want to take any risk that's going to make your team either self-doubt or have something that's going to be adverse to them to not still have that confidence rolling in at halftime. Now, the other problem, too, if they're too conservative, USF has all three timeouts. Exactly. So if they don't get a first down and don't burn enough clock, the Bulls could get the ball back. And that's one of the new rules in college football here in 2018. The 42nd clock starts immediately after the kickoff. And UConn wasn't ready for it. So now, talk about the aggressive play. <laughs> that completely changes everything because now look how far that you're backed up. you got to make sure that you get a first down here more than just taking that shot downfield. Pindell gets it back to the 17. His helmet comes off. And so he'll have to come off the field here on second down as well. And that's big for UConn in any spot, but particularly today, because their backup quarterback, Marvin Washington, did not make the trip here to Tampa. As Charlie Strong took the timeout, he did not make the trip. So Brandon Bizak. His first action, Brandon Bizak, the redshirt junior. Charlie Strong did not take the timeout. Back to the ground to Kevin Mensa. They don't have to run another play. And they're B not going to. I love how after that play, BSAC is like, am I still out here? Am I good? Do I, do I need to come off? What are we doing? I think they thought Charlie Strong took the timeout too because they didn't have to run a play there no, with their backup quarterback. Play. No, they didn't. You're surprised about that. As we are with the score as well. <laughs> the half UConn the heavy underdog on the road and one of the undefeated tied at the half seven back to our New York studios after this commercial timeout you're watching college football on CBS Sports Network meetings in college football but USF needs a much better second half if they're gonna stay that way Heading to week nine of the college football season as we welcome you back to Tampa. Jason Horowitz, two-time Super Bowl champ, David Deal. Happy to have you with us here at Raymond James Stadium. David, two things we thought going into this game. Could UConn improve off the bye on a defense that's the worst in college football? And could USF be better in the first half on offense? One is true, the other not so much. And it would be the UConn side, which I don't think people at home would be thinking. But when you come out offensively for the Bulls and have two interceptions on your opening drive and give that defense for UConn life, this is what happens. This is what takes place. But having said that, this UConn defense throughout the rest of this game 
must play sound football and they must tackle because they think that this is all that's left for this USF offense. They're gladly mistaken. And it's our halftime stats brought to you by Humana and those two turnovers, both Blake Barnett interceptions, but the rushing aspect of this too, that's how UConn's been able to control the ball, keep the ball, because it hasn't been huge, but it's been enough to move the ball with the exception of that one touchdown drive where they went down the field. It really has, but having said that, you know that they're going to have to make some plays on the outside because right now with only 28 passing yards, that's not going to keep up with the track meet that you know this USF offense is going to try to unleash here in the second half. And again, halftime has been fantastic. Somehow for USF all season, as they've come out three times this year, they have come back in the fourth quarter from double-digit deficits, and they'll get the ball here to start the second half. What are the biggest adjustments for Blake Barnett and company here in the second half? You know what, I, I think it would just be go back to who you guys are as a football team. Play clean football, run the football, because we know when you run the football, it sets up everything in the rest of your offense. So just come out, play mistake-free football. Don't do anything execution-wise that is going to hurt yourself. Let the other team, let UConn's defense be the one to make the mistakes. And that's what UConn's going to have to avoid here. Big quarters given up against Memphis, against Cincinnati. Barnett to the air on first down. has got a catch, a broken tackle, and just like you were talking about, the big play on the first play. It's Randall St. Felix, 75 yards on the opening play in the second half. That's exactly what we just talked about, Jason. All it does is take one explosive play for this offense to get things clicking. You see on the outside, the throw to the wide receiver. He gets it going. Ryan Carroll, the young freshman, unable to make that clean tackle. You see him make the contact, unable to wrap up. And right down the sideline, St. Felix with a huge touchdown to start the second half for the USF offense. It's the longest pass play of the season for the Bulls. The extra point is good. And 11 seconds into the third quarter, USF has its first lead of the ball game. It's a way to start the second half. Start fast, get things going. Sure enough, one play, one throw to the outside. Key missed tackle, another missed tackle. Touchdown down the sidelines. And that's the other thing, too, because I'm sure USF fans are saying, we've seen this before, what takes so long? That was just a simple five-yard throw and catch. It was the two broken tackles. It was the two broken tackles, and that's the thing that comes up time in and time out again, not only with this UConn defense, but especially their young players. The basic fundamentals are the things that they need to clean up. They have been a quick strike offense when they strike all season long. And you can't get much faster than 11 seconds. On the boot, the fair catch called for Keon Dixon. Remember, that's a new rule in college football this year. And completed a fair catch. By rule, the ball is placed at the 25-yard line. First down. New to college football here in 2018. So now, the pressure to David Pindell and this UConn offense, who again, on the ground, that's where they did their damage. That is where they did their damage. They did it outside and inside the seams. They made sure that they made this defense worry about him being a dual threat and being able to collapse and take things to the outside. But having said all of that, they've got to find some foundation in the passing game. Pindell faked the pass, and here on the first down, he's got a big play. The quarterback all the way out to the 45 and a 20-yard scamper on first down. David Pindell now up to 74 yards rushing here tonight. Well, once again, you want to get an electric way to start. That's the way to do it with your quarterback keeping it. But like we said, now it is up to them to stay on task, stay on point, and continue to try to stay ahead of the chance because when they have those self-inflicted penalties or negative plays, they're not good enough to overcome them. They run it with Mensa on first down. Spins out of the first tackle, can't get out of the second. Black is there at the bottom of the pile, so too is Kirk Livingstone. And that's the conversation here for this defense. And that's something else confidence-wise, because they've been close with good teams in the first and second quarters. It's what happens when they look up and make the mistake. Exactly. And now, how will they be able to bounce back? Are they going to overthink it? Or are they going to play like they did in the first half and play without any recluse, without any hesitation, and play free? Mensa out towards midfield. 
Greg Reeves again getting the start tonight at linebacker for Nico Sautel, who is out tonight with an injury. And so third down here for UConn. They've gotten some field position, but they desperately need to convert here on third down. They desperately need to because you know if they don't, this USF offense has that capability of once again taking it back to the house with only one play, one individual player, or an explosive play down the field at all aspects of their game. Play clock down to five. Pindell gets off the play. Late blitz comes, gets out of the pocket, eyes downfield, and it's caught! Backup tight end Jay Rose, but they said he was out of bounds. He was beyond the stick. Spindell kept his eyes downfield the whole time. They had the right call here, but what happened? A missed assignment up front by Nino Leon and Ryan Crozier, the center and right guard. They don't pitch, pick up the blitzing linebacker that they were sliding to. Gets the pressure on Pindell rolling out of the pocket. That was unnecessary. I'm not sure he wasn't in bounds on that play. That was certainly close enough to take a look. But they won't. And Magliozzi punts it away. And the fair catch called at the 10. Good punt again from the Aussie. 41 yards, pinning USF back deep. But the Bulls with a 75-yard touchdown to open. Second half up a touchdown. Now uh, USF set to get the ball back with a touchdown lead, but let's go back to that third down play for UConn because it looked like Jay Rose, their sophomore tight end who's getting the action tonight with the injury to Tyler Davis, might have gotten a foot in bounds. Yeah, obviously you see the left foot are still stuck in there, but the question is, would there be enough to overturn the call on the sidelines? Did he maintain control? Was there a bobble? None of that stuff was was able to be brought up, and obviously UConn didn't have the confidence in the call to throw a flag to try to challenge it. Uh, but certainly close enough for the replay official upstairs to at least call down and take a look, but One that would didn't think. happen either. So after the punt, Blake Barnett back to work. Bobbled and incomplete. That looked eerily similar to his second pass tonight, which was off the hands of Wilcox and then intercepted. This one will bring up second down. He's actually had two of those, only one of them intercepted, but I, I, this is what I don't understand. You just had that explosive play to, to get a touchdown on your last drive. Why not come out and try to establish something once again with Cronkite to open up things to be explosive on the outside? That was Barnett's first incompletion after hitting 13 straight. And they'll change this up. Cronkite tonight. 79 yards on eight carries. Barnett back to the air. He's got McCants, breaks it to the outside, and he's got the first down. Tyree McCants pushed out of bounds by Tyler Coyle, but his sixth catch of the night gives USF a first down. We are just talking about how they're going to be explosive. You see it inside. They give a little fake. They throw it to the outside, to the two-by-two two side. Gets a spin out of the block and out of the tackle. Once again, this is the one area where UConn has to do better is by making sure they get those tackles. I know McCants is big, but they've got to come up with a clean tackle. Well, you said how big McCants is. McCants is one of the largest receivers in all of college football, at least by weight. He's only 5'11", There's but a good... listed at 240. We asked Charlie Strong yesterday, is he 240? And what did he say? No way is he 240. But you're sitting here looking at him. We're not showing him in a good light. He's breathing heavy right now. So you can't, you can't judge it off of that, but he is a an absolute monster and for Blake Barnett and for all of the quarterbacks that have been here he is their number one go-to target because they know he will catch it. Barnett deep down the field again! Big time throw one more time to Randall St. Felix who caught the touchdown on the first play of the third quarter. Working that boundary again gives a little shake doesn't get any jam or hesitation at the line of scrimmage by Ryan Carroll is able to run right by him Perfectly placed ball by Blake Barnett and another big play down the side. This one goes for 47. And just like that on two grabs, St. Felix is over 100 yards tonight. Barnett back to the air and nobody home. Thought McCants was coming inside. That'll bring up second down. 
It is amazing how different he has looked on some of these rhythm throws. Not that one, but tonight after that rough first quarter, he's had a pretty remarkable game. And that's what something that Sterling Gilbert said to him. He, I've got to put him in positions to be successful and to build that confidence. Like we said, the first one, the first interception wasn't his fault. That should have been a catch. The second one was his when he didn't throw it to the outside. But like we said, since that adversity, he's thrown unbelievably well. Back to the end zone. McCants, he let him out of bounds. Tyler Coyle, the safety in coverage. So third and long coming up for USF. Once again, trying to take that shot. Gives a little pump action, but throws it to the outside. You see a great job that time. That's what you need to see out of your corners and out of your safeties. Tyler Coyle does a good job of what? Using the boundary as another defender. Make sure if that wide receiver is trying to run by you, use your body lane, use your body weight to get him into the boundary so that he can't make that clean, uncontested test catch like we saw earlier. The Kronk right on third and 10. And he's close to the first down, but he's short by a couple of yards. King came up to make the tackle. And so decision time, go up two scores or go for it. And here comes the field goal unit. Obviously explosive throwing the football these last two drives. But once you do that and once you spread them out, that's something that where you can hit that inside zone running scheme. And that's where it plays on this offensive line to do their job. And so Kobe Weiss with the game winner last week at Tulsa. Broken finger on his right hand. This from 35 yards out to put USF up by 10. And he missed it. Wide to the right. Had an extra point block last week and misses the opportunity to put him up two scores here early in the third. So, UConn hanging around on the miss from Kobe Weiss. And the Huskies offense back on the field when we return. Yes, Super Bowl season continues tomorrow with a triple header first live from London. It's Tennessee and the Chargers and Brady in New England with Chicago fought by an NFC East showdown with Dallas battles Washington. The NFL today tomorrow starts at 9 a.m. Eastern on CBS. High and Eagle Dan Fouts, Evan Washburn will be on hand to see Tom Brady against second year QB. Mitchell Trubisky, who's leading the NFC North Bears, fourth best completion percentage in the NFL. And Mitchell Trubisky last year as a rookie well, who did he have on the sidelines helping him? None other than UConn offensive coordinator John Dunn, who was an offensive assistant last year with the Bears before this year being the offensive coordinator with the Huskies. And then also he has ties back to North Carolina as well, and he just talked about how smart, how hardworking, and what a grinder Mitchell Trubisky is as a quarterback. He said he's going to be a great one. He, he certainly did. looked like it the last couple of weeks. He said that with absolutely no hesitation about the bright side and the bright future of Mitchell Trubisky. A lot of people think very highly of John Dunn's future as a play caller. They need to come up with something here. Down a touchdown. Pindell to Mensa out of the backfield. Off the fake to the other side. And he picks up a couple on first down. So UConn has been successful running the football, but not enough to really threaten what can they do differently here down a touchdown? Well, I think the one thing that they can do, continue to do is make sure that they have positive gains on first down. But the more and more that they continue to have success running the football, that's where you got to take that shot downfield in the play action game. Granted, I know that they play one on one their man corners and they want to press everything up front. But you got to get some of those go routes and contested hitches in there. There's a shot and that's a catch. Mayala out to the 45. That's his first catch tonight, their go-to guy, and a first down. Well, there we go. That's what we need to see out of this offense, the ability to get that football out of his hands. You see the nice read, clear across the middle, works right down that seam, and is able to have a huge gain for this offense. That's what they're capable of. But what do they need to do in order to get that done? They need to be able to still capitalize and get the run game going. That's just the fourth completion tonight for Pindell on nine passes. Back to the ground. Mensa tests the middle, and he's across midfield on an eight-yard pickup on first down. Second down coming up as we go back to New York City. Brent Stover with a studio update brought to you by Independent Craft Brewery in New York. Jason David, 12th right to Oregon, getting pummeled by Washington State. 29-0 late second quarter. Carter Minshew. For Washington State, 231 and three touchdowns, guys.
Brent, the grad transfer last year at East Carolina, just having an amazing season for Mike Leach. Here, David Pindell brought down from behind. Jawan Brown with his third sack of the season. And it'll bring up third and 10 for UConn. Once again, miscommunication up front by the offensive line. You see that they are bringing a blitzer inside. There's an end coming off of the edge. Two guys blocking one. That is not going to get it done offensively for you. There's got to be communication among this offensive line that out of this group in the offense has the most experience out of anybody. Ayala's back on the field for this third down. He left after that catch. Keon Dixon, their big play receiver. He hasn't had a chance yet tonight. Pindell, plenty of time. Pocket still holds. He can order breakfast. Tosses it up and it's incomplete. His six foot five tight end, Aaron McLean, the intended receiver, but nothing downfield. I was surprised he didn't take off. With the amount of time that he had and everybody running, covering their wide receiver, I was surprised too. But you have to give a lot of credit to the back and the secondary of this USF Bulls defense. They allowed zero separation by the UConn Husky wide receivers. So even with that scrambling, even with that amount of time, they were sticky and they were all over their wide receivers. Nagliozzi will try and pin USF inside its 20 again. A high boot from the Australian punter and a fair catch. Not called by McCants this time. And he's wrestled down right away by UConn. That's Keon Dixon down there to make the tackle. The Bulls up seven, but in a tighter one than most expected. Ah, tie game at the half. USF scored on the opening play of the third quarter in the 21st ranked Bulls leading UConn 14-7. So we take a look at the AP poll powered by Ram Trucks. UCF at ECU tonight trying to win a 20th straight game. Looking like they're going to do that. Oklahoma and Kyler Murray are a resounding win against TCU on the road tonight. Uh, but, but David, UCF in the big picture of the yeah. college football playoff. Do you think there's enough in the American if they were to run the table again? to get into the college football playoff picture. You know what, that's one of the toughest things because if you, they roll the table, think about what they've been able to do over the last two seasons. But when you sit there and you look at the top of it and you see Alabama, Ohio State, Notre Dame, when those teams are at the top, it's going to be very difficult for a team like UCF to break in. Cronkite on first down, that's Ford off to the races. And brought down inside the 15, and he's down. Injury timeout. Got an injury timeout, but look at that. The little jump back, the, the skip back. When you run the inside zone scheme, you always say there's no backside. They were able to flush it down, sees that there's a, a hole open to the outside, gets that cut, and is able to run it right down the sidelines. For this offense, though, they're hoping that he's able to bounce back because right now, Ford is down. Uh, he bounced that for 78 yards, a career long for the freshman running back out of Miami, Florida. They're attending to the five foot, 565 pounder. But again, at halftime, we talked about USF's abilities to hit big plays. We talked about UConn's ability to give up the big play. The opening play of the third quarter is a 75 yard touchdown pass. Yep. They've also had a 47 yard pass, and then that one. That's the thing that you have to maintain for an entire game, first play to the last, the mental toughness to just do your job. And that's one thing that when you see this defense and when you watch them on film, it's there's a consistent drive. There's a consistent drive, and then there's a drive that two or three people don't do their assignments, and they give up that big explosive play like we've seen in this game right here. And then lo and behold, you look up, and all of a sudden, USF is knocking on the door of 400 yards for the ball game. And in a, in a blink, we're just not even halfway through the third quarter, and they were nowhere near nowhere 250 near. in the opening half. So on first down, this time it is Cronkright trying the middle of that defense, still on his feet. And he works his way down to the eight-yard line, so a four-yard pickup for Cronkright, who's now at 88 yards tonight, 12 yards shy of a fifth straight 100-yard game, which would tie the record for the most at USF history. Look at that. Three plays of 40-plus. 
and each one of them brought them back into this game. And all this half. Yep. They're in the third quarter. Now false start coming here on the Bulls. False start. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So that'll push them back to second and 11, but the Bulls are still in the red zone. Brought to you by Verizon. And USF on the season. Pretty successful in scoring. But they've also had to settle for a bunch of field goals, trying to gain some distance between them and UConn, especially after Kobe Weiss missed a 35-yarder earlier here in the third quarter. Now let's see if we, they can finish this drive because we've seen where they've gotten down in the red zone. They've had two penalties that pushed them all the way back, and then they tried to settle and had to pump. And they're going to have to take a timeout. They had all kinds of confusion South Florida. off first, of the penalty. And so to avoid a delay of game, Charlie Strong came running up to call the timeout. I was just talking about possibly getting more penalties in this drive like we saw early on in the uh, second quarter. So this is something that for this offense, in order for them to continue to build that consistency, they can't have the negative plays like we've seen, especially when you're getting down into the red zone. Good teams are going to be able to capitalize on Well, that. and their issue too, and we talked about this at the beginning of the broadcast, undefeated is undefeated especially when you're heading towards the end of October. They're 6-0 and into the night, trying to tie the school record at 7-0. and But they still have a road trip to Houston, on the road at what is a one-loss Cincinnati team. They still have a road trip to Temple, who is unbeaten in conference play. And then the Friday after Thanksgiving is the rematch with UCF. So they got to get better in a hurry, or this unbeaten season spiral out of control. Out of the timeout on second and 11. Barnett to the air, to the corner of the end zone. And it's incomplete. Tyree McCants, the intended receiver. Robert King, the third, was in coverage. That's one that actually Barnett could have got out of his hands earlier. If you see that, and he makes that read quicker, there's going to be more separation for McCants to go able to get that and not have that pass defected. Tonight, a touchdown run for Ford. He's being checked out on the sidelines. Barnett's got a touchdown pass. This is third and 11. The gift to Cronkright. Breaks one tackle. And he's not going to get the rest as a late flag flies in. I think that they're going to get Demetrius Harris with a hold. That's exactly the call. And the question is, will Randy Edsel accept it or decline it? Holding. Holding. Offense, Offense, number 67. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. It's Hal Robertson who's in for... I don't think Hal Robertson's... Yeah, they meant 64. 64 is the left guard, Demetrius Harris. So... They bring on the field goal unit again. It was on Harris. The hold right there, feet get beat, hands outside the framework. Easy call for the official. And Cronkite wasn't going to pick up the first down anyway, so Kobe Weiss, who missed from 35, this one from 30. This time good. So USF, 17 unanswered points with 10 here in the third, and the Bulls with some breathing room. 6.07 to play in the third quarter. Back here at Raymond James Stadium, Jason Horowitz alongside two-time Super Bowl champ David Deal, 17-7. Number 21 USF, the lead against UConn. Huskies had a 7-0 lead deep into the second quarter before the Bulls ended on a good drive that took a couple of minutes right before the half. And then they've come out here in the third quarter and have done what they have done all season, which is put together loads of points right out of the gates in the third and sometimes the fourth quarters. And in this football game, this upcoming drive for the offense of the UConn Huskies is going to be the most pertinent one in this entire game because if they're not going to go down, drive down, and get some type of points out of this, either a touchdown or a field goal, this game is going to get out of hand. Dixon on the return. He bobbled it, and he's driven back. So UConn will start 
at its own 20 again. A three and out on the opening drive, and then they took advantage of a Blake Barnett interception, the first of two. 58 yards on five plays. They did it on the ground. They've moved the ball at times, but not more than one or two first downs in any given drive, and they haven't really threatened to score. Well, the problem is, is with that consistency, it's either a penalty here or a missed assignment here or a missed block here. Those are things that right now, when you're sitting here facing this football team in the second half, you cannot do. Vendell keeps it, and he's just not going anywhere. Black pushes him back, maybe a yard on first down. David Pindell came into the night one of 13 quarterbacks in the FBS to lead his team both in passing and rushing. He does have 67 yards on the ground tonight. To the air on second down. Taking a shot. Myal is open, and it's in and out of his hands at the 40. There was the shot to the sideline that they tried getting it. Why not? Why not take that shot? It's more than they've been really absolutely going after towards those edges to the outside. So you see the protection is clear on the inside. Ball's thrown just a little too high. If he sails that one inside, that's going to be an interception. Ayala appeared to be a little shaken up after that incompletion. He trots off the field. Cameron Hairston, a redshirt freshman, is now on for UConn on a crucial third and nine. Pindell takes off. First down and a lot more. David Pindell out towards midfield. Finally chased down by USF's Tyrone Barber. Looks like one of the same problems that they had last week up against Tulsa, except for it was just a delay draw by the running back, this time with the quarterback. You see all the eyes of the defensive backs and the linebackers are running with wide receivers. Gets a clear crease and seam down the middle to take off, and that's why you love a quarterback that can run like that. But can they put a couple of those plays together? Xavier Scott on first down. He fights for a couple of yards, bring up second down. UConn trying to move on the drive. Let's see what else is going on around the country. As we send it back to New York City for an update with our man Brett Stover. Jason, we got a developing situation in West Lafayette. David Blau to Rondale Moore for this touchdown. 14-3, Purdue leads number two Ohio State. That game just went to halftime. Brent, I would definitely call that a developing situation. <laughs> the nation's number two on the road in prime time. Purdue after that 0-3 start to the year, looking for a fourth straight and their biggest. Big throw, Pindell. Kyle Buss makes the grab, and UConn is in the red zone. Great connection on that one. Once again, good protection up front by this offensive line, able to seal things. And on that one, even though the ball was a little bit inside, Boss was able to reach in there, grab it, and pull it back in for a key, key conversion and a big play down the field for this offense. That's the type of energy and excitement and momentum that they need to build. That's a 35-yard pickup for UConn. Pindell keeps it himself on first down and muscles his way for about three yards. Greg Reeves there along with Jawan Brown. And we talked about this being a crucial drive. It was the third down that Pindell picked up with his legs. And he is now over 100 yards, or approaching it, 97 on the ground. Approaching his third 100-yard rushing game of the season. That's Beals in motion. Pindell keeps it himself, fouling Beals. He's over 100, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, David Pindell. And the quarterback gets UConn back within a score. We talked about all 11 being involved in the running game and setting up blocks. We see in the little fake jet sweep All coming side. over. Defense, number 99. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, it's a touchdown. So they motion over Tyreek Bills. They don't give it to him, but what do they do off of that? He sees that people are coming off the edge, is able to get a hit. That second one, that last hit was just enough to be able to get Pindell inside and get that touchdown. And what a job to keep his arm off the ground. Hand went down, but the forearm did not. Extra point booted through by Harris. 
and UConn answers the field goal with a touchdown drive. The Huskies hanging around. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Today's Military. Your child's success tomorrow begins with your support today. Visit todaysmilitary.com to learn more. By Bud Light, reminding you not to drink and ride your horse. By Ace, the helpful place. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I didn't kick it away for UConn after the 80-yard touchdown drive, and here comes USF. That's Antoine, and D'Angelo Antoine trying to answer and pushed out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A 65-yard return. Check that, Jernard Phillips on the return for USF. Great job setting this up. You see that right now they have it going in the middle, in the middle, but then they bounce it. Bounce that return to the left. You see key blocks on the outside, getting those double teams working upfield. Once again, a big momentum play for South Florida to come out and get their offense in scoring position. So how do you respond after UConn marches 80 yards on seven plays? You set your offense up at the 25. <laughs> It's a great way to do it. Cronkright breaks one tackle, and not the second, but he picks up five yards on first down. And now he's up to 93 yards rushing here tonight. The transfer out of Florida sat out last year, had one start in his two seasons with the Gators, but coming into the night, third in college football at more than 151 yards per game on the ground. Barnett keeps it this time. Breaks it to the outside, and Blake Barnett Two plays and the answer for the Bulls, who go back up by two scores. You could tell that the tempo, the speed, and the pace of this offense in the second half has started to wear down the UConn defense. You see them slipping off of blocks. You see them not maintaining discipline in their gaps or making sure that they're the edge defender. They get a clear cut quarterback rollout keep right to that left side and that's something that you cannot let up when you've been playing so well to keep yourself in this game. Weiss hits the extra point. And the same play that got them back into the game against Tulsa last week gets them up by 10 here in the third quarter. It's the way that you want to get this thing rolling. If you can get those play action passes on the outside, you get the big runs going. And now Barnett, the quarterback, is having a great time running the football. I can't wait to see what they do their next drive. Charlie Strong probably is just wondering what takes us 30 minutes. <laughs> they had three points last week against Tulsa in the Which opening. We asked after. him this, and, and he said, "I have no idea." He goes, "Why? I, I, I don't understand why they have to be the first one to throw the punch, and we have to sit back and then be able to be the ones to retaliate in the second half." So 17 third quarter points here for USF. Blake Barnett closing in on 240 yards passing. He's also got 54 yards on the ground. And now the defense getting set back coming on. Dixon cannot hit a big return himself. And so UConn will start right around the 20. Well, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And be sure to join CBS Sports Network for the Auto Nation Cure Bowl, benefiting the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Coming your way December 15th. We can tackle this. Opening weekend for bowl games. Happy to have a bowl game once again here on CBS Sports Network. Earlier tonight, the USF dance team also had pink pom-poms. They've turned them back in here in the second half for green ones. And whistles before the snap. Ball starts. Offense, not all 11 players were set for one second prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. And that's the second time we've had that tonight. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, not a heavily penalized team. That's just the third on Randy Edsel's squad. 
Can they put together another drive? Pindell has a receiver. It's Mayala, and he's up close to the first down. So David Pindell starting to get going. That is the one thing I will say is when this offensive line communicates and they talk to one another, look at the amount of protection that Pindell has. It's just the communication of it. But when you sit here and you look at the way that they're able to move the football when they get things in sync. And they picked up 14. Mentz on second and one. He's got the first down. And that's a big play. It is. Because after the touchdown and then the penalty to have first and 15, to be able to move the sticks and keep the offense on the field is huge. Especially when you're backed up and you know the magnitude of, once again, where you're at and the way that your defense is playing right now as well. So for this offense to be able to overcome that, that is great. But now let's see how consistent they can be on each and every one of these plays for the rest of this drive. And the Huskies have run the ball for more than 200 yards tonight, and the third quarter's not over. Here comes Moore. Pindell takes off again and leveled at the 39-yard line. Coming up to make the stick, Mikhail Point. They continue to once again get things set up with him having that little bit of delay draw. It allows their offensive line to get a little bit of more time to get that double team and get the movement. But also, what does it allow them to do? Get the running back through the hole to be another one to set up the block for him to get through. Approaching a minute to play here in the third quarter. The Bulls leading by 10, trying to stay undefeated. Mensa cuts it back in the hole, and he's up to the 45 for a first down. Greg Reeves brought him down. But through the middle, it's been the same spot of the defense that UConn has attacked. And it's the same thing that this defense faced last week against Tulsa. Just continuing to push it, push it, stay consistent with it. And all of a sudden, one of those may break into a big touchdown run. That's what UConn is banking on right now. They're staying consistent with the running game, which is allowing their offensive line to get the protection in the passing game they need. Now let's see if they can capitalize and get a big explosive one out of it. It's the backup tight end Rose in motion. Pindell keeps it again. This time, two USF players there. Nick Roberts coming up out of the pile. And UConn does not have to run another play if it doesn't want to. Now they have stuck with the number 21 team and the undefeated Bulls all night long. And they're going to head to the fourth quarter with some momentum and the ball around midfield, but trailing by 10 to the fourth. Which, if you are UConn, you are perfectly fine with where you are at right now. Staying competitive and fighting and getting this game into the fourth quarter. That's the end of the third quarter with USF leading UConn 24-14. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by GEICO. I like to have all season USF with points in the second half, but UConn is in a ball game heading to the fourth quarter for the first time this year against an FBS opponent as we take a look at the Chick-fil-A game summary. Yes, USF scored 17 and put up a ton of yards in the third, but UConn's not going anywhere, David Deal, and, and their quarterback, David Pindell, has had a good ball game. They've kept swinging, kept swinging. Their defense started off getting the takeaways to start in the first half. And now let's see if they can finish this drive. They've been having some great runs like we saw in the third and nine with Pindell. They've had some crossing routes taken down to move down the field. Now let's see how they can continue to build, but more than anything, be consistent in this drive. Pindell to the air with the first play of the third, taking a shot, and it's intercepted. Nick Roberts with the pick for the Bulls, and a lot of green in front of him. Roberts looking for the pick six. Finally brought down at the 16-yard line. The red shirt freshman with his second career interception and a huge one for this USF defense. Well, on that one, Pindell is trying to get it to the outside, but he does not put enough on it. You know that the safety is going to be coming and breaking from the inside. So if you do throw this, you get it all the way to the outside, to the boundary, to where your crossing route receiver can either get to it or nobody gets to it. Off his back foot, not the best offense offer. And, and Roberts really giving USF 
great momentum. Roberts keeps getting better and better, and you remember, he had that interception for a touchdown to beat ECU. Forward off the injury. One plays into the end zone. Johnny Ford's second touchdown of the night. And the undefeated season's looking good early in the fourth. Special teams get you in position, touchdown. Defense gets a takeaway, touchdown. Just look at the blocking, the fight, the effort, and look at even on the outside. Darnell Solomon to finish it off with a block on a corner. The interception thrown by Pindell sets up USF. And Kobe Weiss with the extra point, making it a three-score game. School record tying 7-0, looking good for USF. Thanks to Nick Roberts and the defense coming up with a huge play. Ford came into game number seven with two touchdowns on the year, and the freshman has two tonight, including a 16-yarder off the interception to put number 21, USF up 31-14 on UConn. And again, David Deal, the, the question here for UConn, in the third quarter and now here in the fourth, they have taken big play after big play, and they've had a couple of responses. What can the Huskies do now? Just make sure that when they go back out there, play football. Don't press, don't panic, don't put yourself in a situation that you guys have been in before because you can overcome. And they call the fair catch. Big plays for USF in the third quarter. It's been the difference. It started with the first play of the third, a 75-yard touchdown for Randall St. Felix. So that was a great start. And then here, boom, here's a big run by Ford down the sidelines, breaks another one. This was right after the big kickoff return, and then here's that interception. Nick Roberts getting it back, getting him in scoring position, and the next play capitalizing with the touchdown. Now we mentioned before that interception, really the first time UConn's been in a game in the fourth. They're still in this ball game. They've had some quick strikes tonight. They've had some big chunk plays. They're just going to have to do it faster than they did earlier. Exactly, and that's why I was saying you, you can't panic in this position because there still is basically a whole quarter of football left to be played. But having said that, just being smart with your decisions for Pindell now moving forward. Don't try to press. Don't try to throw something that's not open. But still, function as an offense. Menson second down, cuts it back. Couple of yards, but it is enough for a first down. Let's take a look at tonight's Geico difference makers. Kevin Mensa is certainly one of those. He has had a big ball game for UConn uh, and been consistent with David Pindell. Over 100 yards tonight for the sophomore running back from Worcester, Mass. And then again, the guy we highlighted in that package, Randall St. Felix. Only two grabs, they've both been huge. Well, when you're averaging 61 and a half per grab, that's a good sign that you're making explosive plays, but talk about an unbelievable way for him to get that touchdown for them to start right away in the third quarter. Mensa on first down, patient through the hole, gets about six on first down. Mikhail LaPointe making the tackle to redshirt freshman safety. Well, here's the other problem of your UConn. You have gashed USF through the ground. 240 yards rushing for the Huskies. They've done that job. The USF's team. strength is at secondary. Yep. When you're looking in the passing game and you're looking at this defensive back field for the Bulls defense that look like a track team, you know that they're not going to allow these wide receivers to get separation. Pendell gets the corner, has the first, cuts it back, and he's across midfield. Brought to the turf by Hoggins, but again across the 50 on what has been a great night on the ground for the UConn quarterback. It has been. On your this dual threat, he sees that that contain on the inside starts crashing down, is able to break it and get outside and make another key run with those legs. UConn is averaging 6.4 yards per carry. Mensa gets this one, puts his head down. His helmet is ripped off. And so he gives himself up to kill the play, but that's going to tack on 15 yards. 
I also think that there may be a, a penalty on Aaron McLean. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 96. All right. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. UConn number 34 may remain in the game because his helmet came off due to foul. Calvin Pinckney with the face mask, and you heard there the announcement. Be, even though his helmet came off, because it's the defender that rips it off with a penalty, he doesn't have to leave for a play. Got it. Yeah, you see him reaching in there to get the grab, but the, where they threw it initially, I thought they were going to get a hold, but great call by the official to be able to see that. Clear in the open, trying to get the running back, but now he gets to stay in if he wanted to. Well, he, he came off. Xavier Scott is in with Pindell. But they're in striking distance. Pressure from behind. USF off the edge, the sack by Mike Hampton. Talk about a perfect time to dial up the corner cowboy blitz. They did not do this this entire game. Set it up perfectly now where he's unblocked. Pindell doesn't even take his eyes to him. Great sack, great call by Jean Marie, the defensive coordinator. Pindell was lucky to hang on to the football. So second and 17 inside of 11 and a half. And Pindell's going to take off again. One more time into the secondary. The senior out of bounds at the 15-yard line. He picks up 23 more on the ground. It's unbelievable the way that he's continuing to be able to make these big plays with his legs. Once again, you see his eyes downfield, but these are all designed draws. He's just letting things get set up and developed, letting the wide receivers clear things out, running downfield to get the DBs and the linebackers out, and letting his offensive time, uh, offensive line work to the second level. No, this is the consistent play that they continue to run over and over and over, yet it hasn't been stopped. Mensa's back on the field, and he gets the handoff on first down, trying the middle of that line, and again, he gets a couple. Now, a field goal will do you good because you need one somewhere along the lines, but it feels like to stay in this ball game, momentum, all of that, it feels like they got to punch it in the end zone. No question, especially when you have this type of drive that you're having offensively, getting positive gains on first down, pushing it on second down. Your quarterback's making big runs with his legs. Most definitely want to finish this off with a touchdown if you want to continue to have that confidence to stay in this football game. Pindell's over 150 yards on the ground. Mens is near 120. Pindell to the air. It's McLean on the grab, and he's not going to get past the 10. Big stick, Mikaela Point coming up to make the tackle. And we talked about their secondary. A couple of older players like Ronnie Hoggins, but they love Mikaela Point. They're a big fan of Nick Roberts, the two redshirt freshmen who have made big impacts here tonight. They said that both of these players have continued to show up over and over and over up again in practice, and the ceiling is nothing but high, and they keep going up and up and up. That's the way that you want to have, especially on the defensive side of the ball, with the versatility and numbers that they have. Crowd into it on third down. UConn can get a first at the five. Pindell takes off, has the corner, has the first down. Shoved out of bounds by Roberts, but it's first and goal for the Huskies. Pindell is carrying this offense on his back. You see the full zone to the right. You see the tight ends and the linebackers getting out there. That is something that you can't do as a linebacker. How are you not taking a proper angle when you see him running and you can undercut that? Mayala to the top of the screen. Dixon, their tall receiver at the bottom. And whistles. And a timeout taken by UConn. Prior to the snap, UConn called its first charge timeout at the half. 30 seconds. We'll keep it right here. Well, whatever ha happens in this game for UConn, the story coming into this ball game, how tough of a season it's been losing their five games by more than 41 points per game tonight against one of the better teams in the American Athletic Conference they've been in it almost the entire way the offense has moved the football at will on the ground and except three or four big plays the defense has kind of held its own and, and it hasn't been pretty or perfect but it's been gritty and competitive 
regardless of what has happened today, they have continued to fight and fight and fight. And the big thing, sticking together. And not only were you talking about where they were at as a football team, but add in Eli Thomas, their linebacker, that they're playing for right now. Suffered a stroke 10 days ago, released from the hospital yesterday. On first and goal, Mensa up the middle, reaches for the end zone. Touchdown, UConn. Randy Edsel's team, one and five into the season, but here tonight they are given number 21 and undefeated USF. All it can handle down by 11 off of what has been a second touchdown drive of at least 75 yards here tonight. Jason Horowitz alongside David Deal. The only problem, though, the UConn defense has given up a lot of big plays in the second half. Would you think about an onside kick? You know what? That's something that would pop into your brain like this one, but at the same token, you don't want to even give them field position even closer than where they have been, knowing how explosive that they've been in the second half. So as much as that is as an option to try to surprise them, I'm kicking the football downfield. That's what it appears to be. And Iden does kick it down the field. Here comes Jannard Phillips at a huge return on the last one. And a huge hit that he bounces off of before getting brought down. Big time hit. Messiah Turner on special teams. So USF will take over inside his 25. Let's take a look at tonight's top 25 scoreboard brought to you by Ace Hardware. Cincinnati, one of the undefeateds into the weekend. They lost in overtime earlier today to Temple. NC State, one of the undefeateds, also going down. Clemson just throttled them earlier today. Michigan, they had the lightning delay, but yep. they gutted out a win at Michigan State. And Washington State putting it on Oregon after the Ducks last week in overtime against Washington. They did. They put it on them uh, this game at home, and what a, what a great time for them in Pullman. On first down, and a fumble! A fumble, fumble. at the end of the play! Cronkright fighting for extra yards, and UConn, UConn has, has the has football! It. Wow! That is Robert King the third coming out of the pile. Cronkrite is just trying to push it. On injury timeout. He gets the inside zone and he's just pressing and he's trying to fight for yards, trying to fight for yards and push the pile. Then all of a sudden you see that ball get ripped out of there and come flying out of the turf. Question is, if they review this, were his knees down? It's hard to see from the angle that we just saw because of the pile of people, but from where it looked, it might be possible that his knees were down and they could be getting the ball back. Now well, he was down on the play and now just getting up to his feet. Jordan Cronkright, 13 carries, 93 yards tonight. Take a look again. Let's see again. It looks like his knees are down there, but yep. the ball looked like it was already coming out. The previous play is under further review. What a big review here tonight in Tampa. Here it is again. Let's see. There's the push in the pile. You lose the ball carrier among the eight different players in the pile. Now he's down there, but you can't tell where the ball no. starts to come out. So for this one, it's going to stay on the field. There's no way that you're going to be able to overturn this one. There's no inconclusive evidence to see that his knees were down or anything else. Roy Reynolds is our replay official up here in the booth for this American Athletic Conference crew. Adam Savoy. The official on the horn upstairs. After review, ruling on the field stands. So it stands. There's no evidence to confirm it or overturn. And the third turnover of the night for USF, who came into this ball game with just seven giveaways in six games. And it put UConn right back in position. See, I would say more the three takeaways by the UConn defense because this is something that they needed to come into this football game in order to stay in it in the fourth quarter. And this defense has gotten three of them. Pendell keeps it himself. Maybe a yard. LaPointe at the bottom of his feet. 
Uh, he's certainly been everywhere tonight. Inside of eight and a half here in Tampa. Jason Horowitz, David Deal, USF in a game much closer than most expected. Up 11 on a team that's one in five, but off of a bye week and has been re-energized here tonight. Pendel to the air, has some time, looking for the end zone. Mayal is there, and he lost the ball. Mike Hampton there in coverage, and Herji Mayala is still down in the end zone. That's actually one that he broke open. If Pendel witnessed it and saw it earlier, you see him going through his progressions and read back, it was his last one. If he was able to get that ball a little bit more out there, I think that Herji Mayala would have been able to possibly had a better chance of being able to go up and get that 50-50 ball and not allow Hampton to recover on it. Now they're in field goal range. And they need a field goal to get it a one-score game as well. Pindell keeps it himself, takes up off the middle, and gets to about the 21-yard line. Nick Roberts there. A field goal makes it an eight-point game. Would you try the 38-yard field goal or go for it on fourth? For me personally, I would have gone for it on fourth. They're rolling out the field goal team right now. But for me, the reason why I say go for it on fourth, because you have done something this season right now with your football team that you haven't done all year. Fight for it, show the confidence that you have as a team. And you also have a field goal kicker who just had an extra point blocked. And this is Clayton Harris' first career field goal attempt. And it is good! Clayton Harris drills from 38 yards. And it's a one score ball game with 7.20 to go in the fourth. UConn turns Jordan Cronkreit's fumble into three. And we've got an eight-point game here in Tampa. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Fubo TV. Don't compromise. Get over 100 channels of live sports and TV without cable. By Ram Trucks, built to serve. By CDW, making IT solutions work for you. It's IT orchestration by CDW. CDW, people who get it. And by Humana. Homecoming here in Tampa, and what the crowd hoped to see coming to this ball game was USF get to 7-0 with a dominant performance. Bulls might get to 7-0, but it certainly hasn't been dominant over the 1-5 UConn Huskies. Coming out of the end zone, USF, a big return again. Out to the 39-yard line, Nick Roberts, but this one's coming back. Gonna have a block in the back. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team, number 11. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, we talked earlier about USF crushing itself with penalties on the year. One of the most penalized teams in college football, 105th in the nation. Tonight, that's number seven against Charlie Strong squad. After another great return by the kickoff return team. Think about the field position. They would have just given this offense. So instead, it's first and 10 back on their own 23. Barnett back to the air, open receiver. And nearly another broken tackle. That has certainly been a story tonight. Rysheen Bronson gets it to the 34, but he picks up enough for the first down. Just showing that extra fight and that toughness after the catch. See him catch it down low, give a little bit of juke, but look at the leg drive fighting two, through two defenders. Finally, the third one for UConn coming over to take him down. Barnett keeps it on the fake, takes off. Blake Barnett's got a first down and more. Finally knocked out of bounds, but not before he crosses midfield and picks up a first down. The fact that you have a mobile quarterback that can tuck it away and run when there's nothing there, just like we saw, that is something that is such a special thing for an offensive line to be able to deal with. I know from my experience with Eli Manning for 12 seasons, that's not something I worked with. Well, he's not breaking contain. The defense isn't worried about him rolling out of the pocket. Are you sure? I'm 100% positive <laughs> about that one. Barnett hits his tight end, Wilcox. And a flag flies in from the secondary. 
If the play stands, it's a first down. Holding. Offense. Number 86. 10 yard penalty. First down. And that's on the receiver, Stanley Clairvaux. So they'll push them back. Let's go back to New York Studios for an update with Brent Stover. Jason, David, that story is still developing in West Lafayette. Now 21 6 Purdue on this DJ Knox touchdown run, mid third quarter. Brent Purdue, the only team in the Big Ten with a winning home record against Ohio State since 2000. Now, they don't play every year. It's not all that often. But they've upset the Buckeyes a couple of times. Tonight would be a massive one in year number two under Jeff Brom and certainly a shakeup in the college football landscape. After the penalty, it's still first down, and Barnett takes a slide at the 41. It was first and six after the penalty, so it'll bring up second and about five for this USF offense. Inside of six minutes, after the Jordan Cronkright fumble, UConn had a field goal. And, and now, David, the question is, can UConn get a stop and give the offense a chance? Well, you notice what they're doing right now for the first time this entire game for USF is that they're slowing the tempo and the pace down completely because they're trying to take as much time off of this clock as possible. Fake the jet sweep. Barnett keeps it himself. And they're going to get a tackle for a loss. O'Neal Robinson made the right decision. Brings Barnett down at the 43. So third and five coming up for Blake Barnett in this USF offense. And they'll not snap this next play inside of five minutes. Now, UConn still has two timeouts, still plenty of time. But a stop here would be absolutely ginormous in the attempt to try and pull a huge upset. The give to Ford. Has the first down and more. The spin move to freedom. Touchdown, Ford. Johnny Ford, the trifecta tonight. And maybe just ice the win for USF. You said it would be a ginormous stop. How about a ginormous run? Unbelievable run once again by Ford to be able to go inside, get it, jump to the outside, spin off of a tackle, and take it to the house. When they're sitting here watching these two running backs, two different tiles, two different sizes, but the same outcome in the long run. You add the speed of the five foot five Ford to the ability of Crockwright, who has his own speed. And now all of a sudden, it's a dynamic duo for the Bulls. Johnny Ford has topped 160 yards rushing tonight. Three touchdowns. And the Bulls. 7-0, looking like it's going to stay intact. Lean on not believe it or not, this was a 7 Johnny Ford having an absolute dynamic night. And, and, and David Deal, they, they have seven yards, seven points in the first half, none in the first 27 minutes and change in this ball game. So they have exploded like they have much of this season in the second half. And it all started with that St. Felix touchdown to start the first play of the third quarter on their opening drive. And a fair catch caught by Keon Dixon. So that'll bring it out to the 25. Coming up next, it's a Mountain West showdown as San Jose State squares off against San Diego State. Certainly one of the best teams in the group of five. It's right here on CBS Sports Network. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, John Schriffin will have all the action. Kickoff coming up at 10.37 Eastern. San Diego State, Fresno State heading towards the collision course in the Mountain West, West Division. The Aztecs, though, tonight have to avoid the upset at home against the Spartans. And again, that kickoff at 10.37 Eastern time, just about 27 minutes from now. So what does UConn have left? Pindell's got a wide open Herji Mayala streaking down the sideline. And just like that, UConn is out to the 43-yard line. 
pickup of 18 on first down. But they need to hurry up. There's not a lot of time left on this clock. You look that they're pushing the tempo, considering the fact they still only have two timeouts left in this football game as well. They've got to continue to work the edges, but get out of bounds, just like we saw Hergie do. 125 passing for Pindell, career high, 163 yard rushing for the quarterback. He takes off again, and much like the night, he has some space, and he gets eight yards as he's leveled to the turf. That's Jamon Thomas coming up to make the stop. Lock dips down inside of four minutes. And this time a field goal won't do them any good. They need two touchdowns. Pindell to the air. That's Keon Dixon, his first grab tonight. And he's got enough for the first down to stop the clock. Mike Hampton with the tackle. They're six foot, 390 pound sophomore. They talked about him before about being a big play guy. Maybe this is the time they take the shot. Maybe it is. They're definitely going to have to continue to push it forward, but they're going to need a big play with this time left. Back to the air and drilled. Huge hit by Hampton. Xavier Scott, the running back, was just drilled. Hampton was closing in, and he saw this the entire time. Pindell was looking at his running back, threw it directly at him. Right away, Mike Hampton got right off of his receiver and came downhill to make this big hit and play on the ball. And a clean hit at that. Clean shoulder, perfect technique, textbook work. Head moved to the side, yep. hit him right in the ribs. Xavier Scott, the redshirt freshman, actually started the season as the starting tailback for the Huskies. Had a fumble in the opener against UCF. But coming into the night, he was their second leading receiver with 21 receptions. And so he'll go to the sideline as Kevin Mensah comes back into the ballgame. Again, though, for USF, their issues on defense have nothing to do with their secondary. No, it's all up front. It's with their defensive line just getting out of gap and allowing a running back or quarterback to take off with it and have a huge chunk playoff of it. They've given up 297 yards rushing tonight. Pindell looks to take off again. They're over 300 on the ground, and Pindell's got a first down and a late hit thrown. That's Mazzy Wilkins who hit Pindell when he was on the ground. And now they got to separate the players on the far sideline. Ryan Crozier in the mix. UConn's entire offense is over on the USF sideline. Nobody wants cheap shots. Nobody wants late hits. But when somebody takes a hit at your quarterback like that, I love that the offensive lineman went over there to protect him. Well, the question is, was it just a late hit? Was it a late hit? Was it targeting? Let's take a look. He never really went into Personal a foul, slide. No. Necessary roughness. Defense, number 23. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's questionable now. When we saw it, it looked like it was a late hit from this side, and the flag came out immediately. But the fact that he's been running all over the field, he wasn't sliding. It was actual a tackle by your linebacker, and he was coming in to finish it. That's, that's a tough one to call right there. And certainly not a targeting call. No. Wilkins led with his shoulder. He hit him in the shoulder. Certainly not a problem Helmet with that. Helmet to the side. But if he was sliding, absolutely, you're giving yourself up. But he didn't slide. Not to mention, look at the rushing yards, 185. You have to take into account that he's not just a quarterback, that he in the open field is a runner. And when he doesn't slide like that, and your linebacker has him wrapped up and he's not down, that's a clean hit. The ninth penalty tonight on USF. Puts UConn in the red zone. 320 and counting. Pindell, blitz coming off his back foot to the end zone, and it's incomplete. One of the first times tonight that they've gotten a clean shot on Pindell. And it'll bring him second and 10. We talked about the offensive line getting protection up front, but this time they just blow the assignment. The offensive lineman takes the blitzing linebacker, but what? The running back doesn't block anybody. There is a clear miscommunication and mental error up front by the offensive line and the running back in that protection. Xavier Scott back in for UConn. 
He's next to Pindell. Pocket holds. Mayala's wide open, and he trips over the 12-yard line. Herji Mayala, if he stayed on his feet, would have scored. Instead, the clock continues to roll, and it's third down for UConn. You see him step up. Pindell get the ball out there. You get a little crossing route right there by Malaya. Gets it going, gets the shallow, turns around, doesn't get his feet underneath him, can't keep it, and goes down. Like you said, not only the biggest problem of not scoring the touchdown, the fact that the clock is still running is the biggest issue. Yeah, down to 235. Four down territory, no question. Down 15. Blitz comes. Pindell takes off. He's got a lane and he's got the end zone. Second rushing touchdown tonight for David Pindell. 197 on the ground. And UConn again is within one score. Great call by offensive coordinator John Dunn. He sees that on the offensive's right side, that's where all the pressure and the blitzes is coming from. What does he do? He runs with the quarterback to the perimeter to the left, gets an easy touchdown run untouched by the quarterback. Now they need the extra point to make it an eight-point game. Remember, the last extra point from Clayton Harris was blocked. This one he drills right through the uprights. 38 to 30 with 224 to go here in Tampa. Here it is again. You see the blitz coming off of the opposite side. They're able to edge and crease the defense right at the perimeter. Pindell able to take it right outside and stride in very, very nicely. I got to be honest, David, when David Pindell on the opening play of the fourth quarter threw an interception that Nick Roberts took back to the UConn 16. And then one play later, Ford put it into the end zone to go up 17. With what UConn coaches had told us this week about when games somehow, when something goes wrong, they kind of look up at the scoreboard and say, oh, here we go again. Yeah. For a team that has lost its five games this year by an average of 41 points per game, I thought we might see that again. When you combine that with how USF has poured it on in the fourth quarter of this season, but that hasn't been the case at all tonight. Obviously, the buy for UConn came at the perfect time for them to regroup, re-energize themselves, and come out here and play competitive football. And once again, I, I know we don't want to harp on it, but you know that Eli Thomas is playing a huge factor in the motivation for this football team. And the onside kick, it's loose. Who's got it? UConn's got the football. The Huskies have said they did. I thought one of the officials came in and pointed. They still say they've got the football. And now the officials conferring. No signal given just yet. It didn't travel 10, but USF touched it first, so that doesn't matter. And the ball was still rolling on the sidelines. Rolling on the field is a recovery by UConn. Offside. Kicking team, ah. number one. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Free kick. Oh. And I just we just talked mentioned about it. the fact that there was a flag down on the far side while they were having a conversation. Was Herji Mayala offside? down at the bottom off of the screen. You could see that he clearly was. He gets a big jump on that. Well, two timeouts lined up to try it again. This time it bounces right to the USF wall. And Trayvon Sands on the hands team covers it up. The junior running back. And so now USF will keep get the ball, but there is another penalty down. After the play, there were fouls by both teams. Unsportsmanlike conduct, UConn, number 82. Unsportsmanlike conduct, South Florida, number 19. Those penalties will offset. Those are the first unsportsmanlike conduct fouls of the game for those players. Ronnie Hoggins and Mason Donaldson for USF and UConn, respectively. 
So 2.20 to go. They thought they had the onside kick. Now they got to play defense. Two timeouts. A stop and they'll get the ball back. Talk about an exciting time for a football game here. And let's see if this defense can truly step up and take over this game and give them one more chance on offense. But that penalty on the onside kick, oh. The handoff to Cronkright. And he's pushed back. Maybe a loss of one, an immediate timeout taken by UConn. Oh. Second. 30 seconds. Marche Terry making the tackle. And remember, Cronkright on his last carry before that one had fumbled the football. Yeah, pushing for those extra yards. They were able to rip it out of there and get a, a takeaway for this defense once again for UConn. And for this, this is no different. You know that this is a two-minute drive drill, that they want to finish the ball with the victory in their hands. Let's see what UConn can do with the one timeout left and see if they can force something. If you're just joining us, eight undefeateds heading into the weekend. NC State and Cincinnati lost earlier today. Ohio State on the ropes at Purdue. And your keys to the game, get on them early. It didn't happen, but they certainly have scored a lot here in the second half. On second down, it's back to Cronkright. Picks a hole and gets to the 34, and UConn will take its final timeout. On that one, you... UConn, smart, third and final. Smart move by Cronkright on that one. You see double hands tucked high and tight that he's not letting that one get out of it again. And again, USF tonight a win would tie the best record in school start, 7-0 which USF had last year before a loss to Houston. That's who's waiting next week as they will hit the road to take on Ed Oliver and company who today went to Navy here on CBS Sports Network and put it on them. They had a huge second half to the Cougars. Charlie Strong will worry about that later. They got to get out of this one. A first down will end the ball game. Yes, it will. Third and five, here we go. This is why you love football, moments like this. Cronkright, the running back next to Barnett. Wilcox and McCants off to the left. Barnett keeps it to the 30, breaks a tackle, and he's got the first down, and USF can take a knee and get to 7-0 with a sigh of relief. Barnett plays in the running game with his legs and getting to the outside, breaking that contain have been absolutely huge to keep this defense off balance. You see them all crashing inside to the dive, the inside zone. Nobody to the outside to protect and contain. Clearly sees it, that's why he holds on to it, reads it perfectly, and gets the first down to close out this football game and to make them 7-0. It wasn't the prettiest of nights for number 21 USF, but again, on a season where undefeateds are dropping left and right, you take, you take a win any way you can get it. So like we said to start the night, undefeated heading to the final weekend of October would be undefeated. But a comeback last week against Tulsa, a comeback against Georgia Tech, double digit comeback against Illinois. They had to fight to the end tonight against a one in five UConn team. What do you make of what's about to be a seven and zero bowl squad? You know what? It's unbelievable the way that they're able to scratch, claw, and fight their way out of it, especially in the second half. But you know that you can't lean on that for an entire season, especially when you're going next week to play Houston with a dominant front and a dominant defensive tackle. Those things can't take place as you move forward in the season. So with the win tonight, USF on the season improves to 7-0 and 3-0 in conference. UCF, their final regular season game. Temple still to come on the road. Next week, they will take on Houston for this UConn squad to fall to one and six. Out of conference next week against the UMass team that uh, has had its own struggles all year, including giving up 58 this season to USF. So maybe a win is there to be found next week. They put on a heck of a fight here tonight, but it's USF that's gonna walk out of Raymond James Stadium still unbeaten. Great way to fight Scratch and Claw, and at the end of the day, all that matters is a W at the end. It's not how you do it, it's how you get it, and make sure that you get it. Charlie Strong improves to 17-2 and two as the head coach in his second year at USF, and they avoid what would have been a massive upset 
here tonight by a game UConn Husky squad. Again, the final score in Tampa, USF 38-30 over UConn. Now for David Deal and our entire CBS crew, I'm Jason Horowitz. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now let's send you to New York City. Inside College Football Studio, Brent Stover in the game. Take care from Tampa.